Hello and welcome back to The Vegan Runner. You join me on a lovely sunny afternoon. Spring's on its way. Daffodils are almost out in full force. And I've got a great workout for you today. Lactate intervals, you're either gonna love me or hate me after this one. But if you're interested in running faster, stick around. I'm just about to get down to the Taka Trail now. Finish my warm up and then get started with this beast of a workout. Thirty. Fifteen. Fifteen. Final rep. Oh. Let's get back to the fireplace. Ooh. Hello and welcome back to Beside the Fireplace. It's getting lovely and warm here as I slowly recover from that seven. 0.75 mile lactate intervals run or sometimes you'll hear it known as a 30-15 workout. That run had an overall average pace of a 750 minute mile and once again running in the Adidas Ultra Boost 22 which as I get closer to clocking up 300 miles in them it's proving itself to be a really dependable all-rounder. Full review coming soon when I get them to 500 miles so don't forget to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss it. So this video is the second episode in a brand new series designed to help you run faster by introducing scientifically backed and real world tried and tested workouts into your training. We'll dive deeper into the 20 that makes up 80-20 training and give you a clearer insight into the 20% of higher intensity workouts, how they're structured, what they're focused on improving, some sample workouts so you can incorporate them into your training, as well as some tips and tricks that I figured out through my real world experience along the way. You don't have to be using the 80-20 training method to incorporate these workouts into your training, but as an 80-20endurance.com ambassador, look, I have a hat, I fully recommend it. It's allowed me to run consistently and injury-free for almost 18 months, all whilst increasing the mileage and running a half marathon PB of 118, and my first ever marathon in two hours and 57 minutes. If you want to find out more about 80-20 training or try out a plan, check out the links in the description of this video. Right, let's get into it. Lactate intervals or 30-15s as they're sometimes known. Well, what are they? Well, it's a speed interval run with an interesting twist. So an example of today's workout, I ran in zone four for 30 seconds, or more specifically, a pace that you could hold for about 15 minutes and then actively recovered for 15 seconds. In reality, what this looks like is a near sprint followed by a gentle wind down for a few seconds. And because that interval is very short, by the time you've, you've got to recovery pace, you're basically going again for another 30 second burst. And these 30 second, 15 second intervals repeat 10 times before you can take a three minute active rest. And then once that's up, it's time to repeat the whole set twice more. So altogether, there's a massive 30 zone four intervals. And by the time you reach that final set, trust me, you're gonna be begging for that cool down at the end. It's a challenging workout, both mentally and physically. Mentally, because you need to push yourself into the mid range of that zone four pace, but also stay focused during the 15 second recovery to get ready for the next big effort. It's quite easy to switch off at the end of a rep, but before you know it, those 15 seconds are up and you're pushing hard again. So it's a good workout for improving focus. And from the physical point of view, you wouldn't think a 30 second burst would hurt all that much. But in this workout, they, they quickly stack up and you'll need to head into that pain cave for a bit, especially on that final set. But what is all that pain and suffering for? Is it worth it? And what benefits are you going to see? 
For a little while now, exercise scientists and coaches the world over have been obsessed with VO2 max. This is the exercise intensity at which an athlete reaches their maximal oxygen consumption rate, which goes without saying is important. The more oxygen you can consume, the faster and further you can go. So scientists at Inland Norway University looked at designing workouts that put athletes working for as long as possible at their VO2 max in the hopes of improving their athlete's aerobic capacity. The results were positive and across a range of different workout types, they found that 30-15s kept their athletes closest to their VO2 max and the results showed improvement in their athlete's performance. Now I should just sort of kind of caveat this by saying that sports science is an incredibly tricky area to set up accurate studies. The small sample sizes of the athletes involved, the external factors and variables that can affect an athlete's performance, along with limited study periods, sometimes just a few weeks, mean that it's a really difficult to kind of pinpoint one workout and say, this is the one all athletes should do and this one will, will work for everyone. I think it's important to integrate a range of different workout types into your training for, for so many different reasons, not only to work on a whole range of physical and mental attributes, but also to keep things fresh and to keep that enjoyment of running. And that's exactly why I'm making this series. There are plenty more awesome workouts to, to come, so hit that like and subscribe button so you never miss one. So I've been working 30 15s into my training for some time now as part of the 80-20 plans. And there's a, a few things I think you should know that will help you execute this workout so you can get the most out of it. First up, if you can, find somewhere flat to run. I'm lucky enough to have a relatively flat former railway line to, to run along. It's all of the gradients have been smoothed, so any uphill or downhills aren't very steep. I can run for miles along this thing without encountering a single steep hill. So something like this, a track maybe, if you've got one locally that you can use, or you know, if you're really stuck for flat, uh, for a long flat um, area, maybe find something, a flat section of road, a quarter of a mile long should, should be fine. I say this because any significant up or downhill on, on either of those 30 second bursts or 15 second recoveries are going to throw things out of whack. You don't want to be stuck up that, you know, going up that hill on a 15 second recovery. And you've also got enough to think about already without also having to consider your intensity and pace depending on the gradient that you're running on. So try and find the flattest route to run along near you. Secondly, ditch the heart rate monitor, or at least pay no attention to it. 30 second intervals, even at high intensity, just aren't long enough to get your heart rate anywhere near zone four. It might be close towards the end of the intervals, but you can't really rely on it for, for this session. Instead, lean into that intuition. It takes a bit of practice and experience, but you'll get it dialed in. Pace can also work, but again, I find it just lags a little bit and sometimes the GPS gets confused by tunnels and trees and, and all that kind of stuff. So you really need to kind of lean into that experience and put yourself into that pace and just kind of ask yourself, is this pace I, is something I could hold for 15 minutes? Is it too slow or am I going a bit too fast here? And finally, my last piece of advice is to keep moving for that 15 second rest. You're gonna be blowing hard after a few of those 30 second bursts, but really you don't want to, to stop. Um, and you know, I often recommend walking if needed in, in recovery phases to get that heart rate down. But in this workout, a gradual slowdown from that zone four effort seems to work best. 15 seconds just flies by and you don't want to spend the first few seconds of the, of the next interval going from a walk to a near sprint. Um, so using a sort of kind of gradual slow down, just keep that momentum going and uh, yeah, it's going to help you get into the flow of the interval session a lot more. Just follow one, one other tip actually as well that I just popped into my head today. It's all structured on my watch for you. If you buy the 80-20 plan, it's all there. So it just comes through from, I think it gets pushed from the Training Peaks website to the Garmin website and then onto your watch. It's a little bit convoluted, but once the workout's on your watch and it does it all automatically, so nothing too, uh, 
for you to sort of kind of stress about. Once it's on your watch, it's a structured workout. And the temptation, I think, is to sort of keep looking at your watch and kind of keep checking on which interval you're on. I found I got into the, the flow and the rhythm of the, of the block a lot easier if I didn't look at my watch and didn't keep checking, oh, I've got five more to go, I've got six more to go, whatever it might be. For some reason, just, just listening to the beeps, just going when I needed to go and recovering when I needed to recover, the block seemed to just absolutely fly by compared to when I was checking my watch sort of every uh, 10 seconds to see what was going on. So before finishing up on this video, I'll just throw up an example workout that you could use in your training. This is the one that I did today. So a 15 minute warm up followed by 10 lots of 30 15s back to back and then with a three minute rest, repeat the 30 15s block again, then another three minute rest and then get ready for that final set of 30 15s before cooling down with a 15 minute zone one run back home. Now, this may look a bit daunting to some of you or perhaps not challenging enough to, to some you like a bit more punishment. So you can change the duration of the warm up and cool down as well as the amount of 30 15. So for a slightly easier session, try three blocks of eight 30 15s or for a slightly harder version, you could try three blocks of 12 intervals. Most importantly though, just give it a go and let me know how you found it down in the comment section below. I'm interested in hearing how you find this session and any of the others that you might try along the way, how it fits into your training and what it's done for you. Right, I really hope that's been useful to you. As I say, the most important aspect of running faster is to use a blend of different workout types. So be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. It's free, it doesn't cost anything and it might just make me smile when I see that number go up. There's plenty more of these videos to come, so no matter whether you've just completed your first 5K or you're getting ready to smash your 100th marathon, I'm sure you'll find something that's new to you and can help you to run faster. If there's a particular workout you'd like to see covered or if you have any questions about the critical velocity workouts or the lactate intervals or any of the others that I may cover soon, then leave a comment down below and I'll be sure to get back to you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching and until the next one, be the best you.